how good God is, how great God is. Come on, y'all can do it. Y'all can do it. Y'all can all bring the power of the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name. If we go around, let's be loud. Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Seek thy good. Lord, 
Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Please remain standing as we sing our hymn of praise, hymn 116, Silent Night, Holy Night Without Lining. Everlasting thou who art God and God all by yourself. As once more and again, a few of your faithful servants have gathered in this place that we call our sanctuary, a place that we call our shelter 
from the storm place that we call our hiding place. We come, God, because you've been good to us and we come to your house just to say thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you did, but you kept us even in spite of ourselves. You watched over us all night long as we lay in the very image of death. But early this morning, you thought it not robbery to reach down and touch us with a finger of love. And when you called us this morning, Lord, you woke us up clothed in our right mind. A reasonable portion of health and strength, the roofs were still on our heads. There was still food in the cupboard. As far as we know, everything was all right in the family. No phone calls saying trouble on this side or trouble on that side. God, we thank you for your amazing grace and for having mercy. Look on us this morning, oh God. Because we come not for form, not for fashion, but to give you all of the honor and glory because you're worthy to be praised. Forgive us our sins and our transgressions, the sins of omission, the stuff we were supposed to do that we didn't do, and the sins of commission, the things that we've done that we know are not pleasing in your sight. Forgive us, we pray. Give us the determination that nothing but nothing shall separate us from you and your love, which is Christ Jesus. Walk with us. Guide us. Direct us. Take us into the garden while the dew is still on the roses. Tarry with us for a while. Walk with us for a while. Clean up our hearts for a little while. Then let us know everything is going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. We never told the world that the call of you and your son Jesus. Everything's going to be all right. Now, Lord, we come. This Sunday before the birth of our Savior. Not just because it's Sunday, but because it is good to us. Not just because we ought to come, but because we want to come just to say thank you for another opportunity to call on your personal name. While we're here, transform us. While we're here, heal us. While we're here, empower us to run and see what the end is going to be. While we are here, give us a little more love, a little more understanding, a little more patience, a little more peace. Use us to the honor and glory of your name. When we leave this place, somebody will know that we've been in the presence of the Lord. And so we thank you in advance. We thank you in advance for your blessings. We thank you in advance for keeping us covered under the blood of the Lamb. Go to the hospitals, the nursing homes, the individual homes, prisons and jail houses everywhere. Remind them that you're still God all by yourself. And then, Lord, because we know your track record. Because we know what you've already done. Because of our experience with you, we know what you're capable of doing. Because of our history, we say thank you and we count it done. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. 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 Scripture this morning. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, 
was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. God's word for his people. Amen. We greet you this morning in the joy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus to Christ. We certainly want to thank you for joining us for worship and praise in the Mount Zion. African Methodist Episcopal Church, 1305 East Chevy Street in Florence. We greet you in the beauty of this Christmas Advent season. It is our prayer that God has and will continue to bless you richly as we anticipate the birth of our Lord and Savior this morning, Jesus the Christ. And this morning I want to ask you to join me on a personal note to wish a Happy anniversary to my wife of 34 years. Amen. Please join us at 5 p.m. this afternoon for our candlelight service in support of our young people who we showcase during this Christmas season. Our way of getting them back into the fold of worshiping and serving God through their gifts. They've been practicing. They're ready to give us a special treat through their talents. Please know that our protocols are still in place, and we believe that this church is one of the safest places that you can be. Please join us at 5 in the sanctuary, if at all possible. But if not, we will be live streaming. But we would love to see you and let our young people see your support for them. Amen? We ask that you keep in your prayer the family of Sister Maude Keith and Jerry Jr. Uh, on the loss of Maude's brother who was funeralized a couple of days ago over in Africa. And just because the funeral is over doesn't mean the pain goes away. So continue to, to pray for them and keep them in your prayers. Also, uh, we need to continue to pray for one another, those who are in hospitals. Uh, and I won't call their names because everybody hasn't given me permission to tell you they're in the hospital. And so, but continue to pray for the family. We have those who are sick and struggling, and of course, need our prayers and support. Amen. This moment, I want to ask Mr. Henry Bryant to come down front and center, if he would. I have a presentation for him. On behalf of the Florence Dillon District Young People's and Children's Division of the Amy Church. They have decided to honor in each local congregation the eldest male and female members. Now, how many of us know who that is? <laughs> that would be Mr. Henry Bryant, and that would be Miss Evelyn Gow. I have Miss Evelyn Giles in my office, and I will see to it that she gets it, but on behalf of the YPD, from the Florence Dillon District, Sister Thomasina McNeil, and where are our officers? Are my YPD officers here today? I got some here in our church that may not be here today, but we have some local officers on the district and on the conference. So we thank you for your service to God and to his people. Amen. 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 I will really celebrate my 97th birthday on the 17th of last month. The Lord has been good to me. <laughs> Give him a hand. Trying to get the 57 and 67. But if God can do it for him, if he can do it for Miss Giles, then he can do it for us. 
if we trust him and serve him. Amen? Come now to the altar call moments. As musicians give us some appropriate music. I don't know about you all, but I'm enjoying this altar call, but I'm looking for the day when I can come back down there and get on my knees. We're doing it one step at a time. We're back in the house. But when we get back to the altar, to me, there's just something special about being able to fall on your knees in this hallowed place. Yeah, you can pray anywhere you want to. But there's a special kind of feeling that, that some of us get. Everybody may not get it, but there's a special kind of feeling when we can walk through these doors. See our brothers and sisters who've been on this journey just like we have. To see smiles on their faces in spite of what we know everybody has gone through. But just to be in the place one more time. We're, we're, we're waiting until it's time to get back on our knees. But, but until we get there, we're going to continue to put everything on hold and give us individually a chance just to talk to Jesus. So right where you are, think about your life. Think about how good it's been to you. Think about how many times he's brought you out when you didn't see a way out. And if you can do those things, then I don't think you'll have any problems finding words of thank you. Just to say to God Almighty, let us pray.
Happy birthday, me.
Acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. When we meet on next Sunday morning, Christmas Day will have come and gone. Some of us have been making preparations for quite some time, but most, Most of, us of us have really gotten, gotten serious, serious over, over the past, past few days, days because Christmas, Christmas is less than, than a week, week away. Presents, Presents are wrapped and under, under the tree. tree. Menus, Menus for Christmas, Christmas dinner, dinner have been, been prepared. prepared. Names, Names on shopping lists are, in, in some, some cases, cases, still being checked, checked off. off. Like, like most, most of you, you I, too, I too have been, been trying, trying to make, make preparations. Preparations for the holiday, but also preparations for what I would say to you this morning for our Christmas worship service message. Talk about all of the things that we do to get ready for Christmas. Candlelight service that will take place this afternoon and all, All of the work, work and the rehearsals, rehearsals that have gone in to make, make it go over smoothly. All of the All outings, outings and gatherings, and gatherings that, that we usually have at Christmas, but, but especially now that we have the vaccine and we're working towards getting back, back to normal again and folks are doing, doing stuff, stuff again. again. The decorations, decorations that, that we put up here at the church, in your, in your homes, homes, on your, your job, job, on, on the, the city streets, streets, the malls, and the stores, everywhere, everywhere we go. 
We're going to also, also talk about, about the atmosphere, atmosphere at, at Christmas, Christmas time. time. Reminded, Reminded of the song Silver Bell Department says, in the, the air, air there's, there's a feeling of, of Christmas. And it occurred, occurred to me that, that for all practical purposes, Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year, year. In, in spite of the fact that we're still, still having, having to deal, deal with, with this COVID. There's, There's no, no, really no, no other time of year when, when people, people go to the extra mile to be nice, nice and, and do nice things, things for other, other people. people. There's, There's really no other time of the year when people will spend money that we shouldn't spend buying things for other people. We many times go places that we don't want to go to accept invitations to keep folk from feeling bad. And I did, of course, there's some of us who, who do like church folk do. We play the pandemic card, but we go everywhere else. We smile when we don't feel like smiling because we really don't want to put a damper on in anybody else's holiday. Most of us can even put aside what we dislike about folk and be nice anyway. We do whatever we can to show the good spirit and spread good tidings and good cheer just because it's Christmas. And you know, that's really a wonderful thing to do. Just, just imagine how wonderful the world would be if we did it every day of our lives. But even with things as they are, Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. So I want to suggest to you this morning that the reason this is the most wonderful time of the year is because it's all about love. It's all about love. Everything that we do at Christmas, for the most part, is all about love. And the reality is, if you don't know how to love, if you don't have any love in your heart, then Christmas has no meaning to you, really. If you don't know how to love and you have no love, it won't be the most wonderful time of the year because it's all about love. All of those chats that parents have with Santa Claus and about Santa Claus, that's about love. We love our children and, and we want Christmas to be the best it possibly can for them in spite of the fact that our financial system financial situation may not be what we want it to be. We do what we do and we spend what we spend because of love. Husbands and wives spend time and effort worrying about having something that their spouses can enjoy and will like because it's Christmas, but in spite of what you've been through, in spite of how long you've been married, how short you've been married, in spite of the fact that every life has some rain, we still do it because of the love. The gifts that we give, our family, our friends, the gifts that we give our pastor. It is done not out of obligation, but because we love them. This whole season of Advent, the whole Christmas routine, the Christmas story, the nativity scenes, it's all about love. So for my main text today, the main text, I don't really want to talk about the second chapter of Luke. Preachers do that all the time. There ain't but so many ways you can tell about the birth of Jesus. But I believe that Jesus summed this whole thing up in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My brothers and sisters, that's what Christmas is really about. God gave Jesus to us and he gave him for us. He gave him to us on December 25th. And on Good Friday, he gave him for us. The birthday of this son that God gave us because he loves us. That's why it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's all about love. But you see, the challenge for us. You, you, you all understand the challenge, right? The challenge for us is to be able to show this love that we show on Christmas Day every day. God wants to know every day 
that we appreciate his love for us and his gift of Jesus, not just on Christmas Day. But God also wants us to show that love, not just to him, but to each other. Everything that has anything to do with Christmas ought to be about love. Many of you have on your red today. It's pretty. The red and green is pretty. But that doesn't make Christmas. Exchanging gifts is a good thing, and we like it, but it's not the most important aspect of Christmas. And many times when we have a bad Christmas, it's because we got our, our, our priorities in the wrong place. If all I'm concerned about is what you're giving me for Christmas, I'm in trouble. My focus ought to be on what God gave me for Christmas a long, long time ago. We sing Christmas carols and we love to him, but the choir can't sing it without love. You don't feel the love that is not there. The Lord knows some of us get confused. We think being in church makes us church. Being in church and at church looks good, but it means nothing if you don't live with love from Sunday to from Monday to Saturday. All that you do for Christmas is nothing but a show. But you can't love one another every day. And folk, I, this ain't no shouting message. It's just the truth. I understand that everyone's situation is not ideal this morning. There's someone somewhere this morning who is thinking that God has forgotten about you. There's someone who's thinking that your situation this Christmas is such that you don't feel too much love. There's somebody wondering why others seem to be okay, why you're always struggling, wondering why you just can't seem to get it together. I came out to tell you this morning, God loves you in spite of what you're going through. And even though you think you may not be loved this morning, I came out to tell you it was love that woke you up this morning. In spite of what you're going through, it was love that kept you standing, even though the devil has thrown his best punch and tried to knock you out. Love kept you standing. Love kept you when everybody seemed to turn their back on you. Love gave you the strength to hang on in there, even after all you've been through. Then, then, too, it was love. God's love, and that's why I say it's not over. God's love that puts people in your life at the right time to encourage you to keep on keeping on. God's love puts you in place to receive the blessings that God has you. All of your blessings ain't going to fall out the sky. God blesses folks so they can bless you. And I may not know your situation. But don't ever think that God has passed you by. Don't ever think that God runs out of blessings. And don't think that God's blessings have a certain season. It's never too late for God to bless you. Hang on in there. Keep the faith and keep on trusting in God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have the everlasting life. It's all about love. Christmas is about the love that God has for us, for us and the love that we ought to have one for another. We're getting ready for Christmas, going out to the mall that I probably got to go back to. But the reality is we can spend all of the money we want to giving and receiving gifts, but understand that we can never match what God gave us through love through the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, I believe that we can go a long way in trying to show our gratitude, but we got to show it by loving each other. Just because you buy me something, doesn't mean you love me if you treat me like a redhead slave next week. It's about the love. It's not... Everything that we have in this world 
will dissolve away if we live long enough. And if we die first, it won't go with us. You cannot take it with you. But if you've got a clean heart, if you've got the love of Jesus in your heart, if you know how to treat your brothers and sisters, if you know how to take care of those who are less fortunate than you are, if you've got love in your heart, and the truth is that after all we've experienced in the past two years, I believe that all of us can stand to have a little more love in our lives. We've dealt with sickness, but God's love saw us through. We've dealt with the stain of death, but God's love brought us through. We've dealt with the uncertainty of COVID, and we're not done yet, but God's love still sustains us. Gun violence and death are all around us, but God's love still protects us. Those tornadoes that are all out there, what could have kept them away from us? But the love of God is still all around us. Living in a world where hatred and racism are front and center, but God's love keeps on moving mountains out of our way. God's love, we're in the country now trying to support our family. Everything is going up. One time you could get chicken wings from another, now you can't buy. Everything is up, but God's love still sustains us. The kind of grocery that folk used to throw out, you can hardly afford it now. But God keeps on making a way because he loves us. So now, before I take my seat, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Jesus is love. Jesus is love. Emmanuel means God with us. God gave us Jesus, God gave us love. God is with us through Jesus, so we have God's love. My brothers and sisters, all of this is about love. Don't stop loving. Don't let anybody steal your joy. Don't ever forget that Jesus is the reason for the season. Keep on living, keep on loving, and keep on trusting God. Merry Christmas.
presence and participation in this morning's worship experience. Please be safe. Have a wonderful and blessed Christmas day. And we'll see you in a week. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance unto you and grant you his peace now, henceforth, and forever. Thank you.